Hello and welcome once again to another edition of The Kick. My name is Kyle Eason and I'm here with another very special guest. Uh, his name is Tom Higley and Tom is a serial entrepreneur and CEO of 101010. And if you don't know what 101010 is, he's going to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, Tom, if you could just give us an idea as to the milestones and highlights that uh, brought you here today along your path. Well, I think uh, if, you, if you start far enough back, um, I'm a Michigan kid, a transplant to Colorado, uh, and in Michigan, uh, I, uh, I'm the kid who barely graduated from high school. Uh, so in 1972, which is a long time ago, uh, when I uh, was scheduled to graduate, I hadn't attended uh, most of my senior year in high school. The only reason I was able to graduate is I um, had become closely connected to uh, an English teacher there who was probably the only intellectual I knew in the system. Uh, and I had an independent study with him. He persuaded the principal to let me graduate. So without that, uh, the other things that I'm going to mention probably wouldn't have happened. Uh, one that did happen that probably would have is uh, I became a professional musician and played guitar, uh, lead guitar in a bunch of um, very interesting bands. I played with the DeBarge family. I opened for Barry White and the Love Unlimited Orchestra. I uh, played the Chitlin Circuit. So uh, places that most folks who look like me don't get to go. And 10 years after all of that, uh, including some uh, other uh, interesting side activities like working in a Fisher body plant and uh, painting houses, waiting tables, all of that, I finally decided that maybe it would be a good, a good idea to get a college edu education, so I did that. I uh, did that and went to law school um, and found my way after law school uh, to Denver uh, to practice beginning in 1989. I started at Holland and Hart then. Um, I maybe practiced six years before uh, being asked to create a community computer network in Fort Collins, uh, Colorado. And that was such an amazing experience because in 1993 when we started that, the internet started to become a thing for most people and the World Wide Web started to become a thing for most people. So we built this using the internet and the World Wide Web and I never had so much fun and I never uh, found so much uh, interesting as I had found uh, as I started that. So that was Fortinet in uh, 1993, and I've uh, started six companies that I've run as CEO, stepped in to run six that I didn't start, or, or two that I didn't start, sorry, um, and raised a bunch of money, been um, just the beneficiary of lots of experiences from tech stars to uh, lots of private companies. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. I, the one thing that caught my attention was the Chitlin circuit. What could you tell us about that? So there are places. Uh, mostly in the South, that um, are not probably home to folks that look as white as I do. Um, but Mobile, Alabama, uh, Pensacola, Florida, um, Meridian, Mississippi. Uh, I played the Dashiki Club in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, after driving for two days pretty much nonstop, um, uh, starting uh, right after finishing a gig in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So uh, at the age of, call it 19, uh, I'm uh, in an experience that's vastly different than most of my high school classmates, uh, most of the folks in my um, rather um, significantly white Dutch reform community of uh, Spring Lake and Grand Haven. So pretty different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So it sounds like you had some really great experiences, paid a few dues, went on back to school and uh, have had an amazing career since then. I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up. That's a very interesting story. Um, you know, the show, uh, our show here, The Kick, is really about special ideas, ideas that have legs, ideas that have a certain kind of magic or uh, ideas that inspire and awaken people. And uh, I try to bring folks on the show uh, who have those kinds of ideas. What, what is that idea for you? Is there something in your life that is a kick? Well, um, the thing that I've been focused on for the last uh, four or five years uh, is something that I call uh, impact entrepreneurship. And impact entrepreneurship uh, gets a boost from this thing that we call 10, 10, 10, and I'll say a little bit about that in a bit. But the notion behind impact entrepreneurship is sometimes described in different ways, but it's that foundationally, um, 
these are entrepreneurs who want to deliver something um, powerful, something compelling in terms of impact for the benefit of the commons. Uh, this is the society, community, the world. And they want to build their for-profit business, their revenue generating business on the foundation that is that, um, that core impact generating capability. Uh, you could even say that Google was a form of that kind of thing where free search is being delivered for the benefit of individuals, for the benefit of organizations and corporations. Um, but they don't charge directly for it. They build the business uh, for which they do charge on top of that as a foundation. And that thing, because it's free to the end user, continues to expand and to grow in really powerful ways. So think about that in the context of entrepreneurship and what, you're, what, what you might think about is that that base, that benefit to the commons is like a, an externality. It's a thing uh, that's being uh, thrown off uh, by the for-profit generating uh, uh, organization and it really becomes its base. Um, so 101010 is uh, constructed around that as a notion, the idea that we can encourage entrepreneurs who've had previous success in a context to, when they think about starting their next business, think uh, not about uh, creating an app, not about uh, uh, taking out an iPhone and thinking what cool thing could I do with this, but instead to think about wicked problems uh, that they might actually be able to solve and uh, for which they might be able to raise the necessary capital to start, fund a company that would do just what I said create these benefits to the commons and deliver a, a powerful revenue stream that allows this whole thing to be sustainable. Wicked problems in health, water, food, energy, learning, infrastructure, waste, um, all of those things. So in a way, it's sort of in impact entrepreneurship for impact entrepreneurs. That's right. Okay. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. I've been involved uh, with 1010 just a little bit. Last year was the first year. Uh, and really great experience, very uh, interesting learning experience for so many people. And just brings together uh, just a group of really special people, people who are, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, committed to the commons, uh, common good. And uh, I've just had a great experience uh, with folks there at 101010. And do you think that's a common experience with people that get involved? Uh, I can say that the uh, prospective CEOs, and, and I, I didn't mention this, but I think this is important. So we bring in 10 uh, prospective CEOs, folks from all over the country, um, folks from different backgrounds and perspectives. We bring them together for 10 days, and um, we put in front of them 10 wicked problems in a specific area. But we surround them uh, with a community of folks that uh, is supporting them. And that includes what we call validators. These could be nonprofits or for-profit corporations. They could be individuals who understand the wicked problems that are on the table. Um, and between uh, these validators and another group that we call ninjas, ninjas, and, and you may remember this well, uh, ninjas are the folks who have the, the capability to support these entrepreneurs as they're thinking about these wicked problems and exploring market-based solutions to those wicked problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, the context for all of this is really that you put uh, together or you put in place um, the mechanism that allows these entrepreneurs to carefully consider uh, whether they're passionate enough about, whether they could find a real solution that could be market-based. That's what they do. Uh, and last year we were fortunate to have a company emerge from this, uh, Burst IQ, that um, is now situated in Colorado Springs, uh, has raised uh, initial capital and is going after using blockchain technology, uh, the sort of thing that you see associated with Bitcoin, using that blockchain technology uh, to deliver secure access to health data uh, for uh, individuals and organizations uh, on a, a significant scale. Mm -hmm. so. and that's fascinating. I know uh, Frank, is it Frank Ricotta? Frank Ricotta is the CEO of Frank Burst IQ. CEO. And uh, he's got an amazing team around him. And just quite even, uh, that may be the only company that now uh, has formed as a result, per se, of the first 10, 10, 10. Is that true? So it's not clear. Mm -hmm. there, uh, there actually is uh, another prospective CEO who is part of that group who is now uh, very much at work and in partnership on exploring another health-based uh, uh, opportunity that um, 
very probably wouldn't have come to fruition had it not been for 10, 10, 10. And there's some other things out there in the wild that I can't talk about. So, so we'll see how many in the end are formed. But we're now gearing up for the one that we're going to do June 20 to 30 uh, here in Denver, Colorado. That too will be 10, 10, 10 health, 10 wicked problems in health. And uh, we're beginning to source and then select or curate the 10 wicked problems that would be on the table and beginning to explore um, invitations to prospective CEOs who could be part of this next class. Mm -hmm. We're also, of course, looking for the volunteer base that will support us in this because that's non-trivial. I think we had nearly mm -hmm. 110, 112 uh, volunteers supporting us last Amazing. year. Mm -hmm. If someone watching wants to volunteer, they should go where? Contact who? So uh, there are a couple of ways uh, to connect to us. Uh, you can uh, check out our website, 101010.net. And there's an opportunity there to provide your information, and that would be one great way to do this. Um, there's also an info at 101010.net uh, email address that you can send information to. And we would uh, encourage you, whether you're uh, interested in uh, an invitation as a prospective CEO, think you might want to volunteer, I think you might want to do research on the wicked problems in health, uh, any of those things, uh, you bet. That's fantastic. So tell us now a couple things. Uh, you're in the second year of 10, 10, 10. How will this year be different than the previous year? And uh, where do you want to go with 10, 10, 10? If you could envision an ideal future for 10, 10, 10 going forward, what would you like to see happen? So uh, um, first you asked how things will be different. Well, I, I'm hoping we'll suck less. <laughs> uh, um, uh, and, and honestly, last year was amazing. It was just extraordinary because of the efforts of many, many people. So I, I don't mean that to minimize any of the energy and hard work and, and what happened, but it was our first time and no one has done this anywhere before. So when you're creating something from scratch, uh, you learn, and, and our goal is to learn. One of the things that we learned very quickly uh, is that not everyone who comes to the program, whether they're volunteers or validators or their prospective CEOs, has the same base of knowledge and understanding. So uh, we learned quickly that what we want to do is provide uh, to everyone who is a part of the 10, 10, 10 program, maybe eventually to a larger slice of the world, we want to provide pre-program course materials that provide an introduction to a collection of things that we think are foundational. I'll give you some examples. So this pre-program course could include introduction to lean, as in lean startups. Um, 15 years ago, when I, uh, 20 years ago, when I began in all of this, there was no notion of a lean startup. There, uh, Steve Blank was sort of unknown at this point, so was Eric Ries. Um, so the whole lean startup customer discovery, customer development uh, principles that have uh, come so profoundly into the vocabulary of, of startups and entrepreneurs, that was nowhere on the horizon. And there are still CEOs who are uh, successful, uh, have exited, who have missed that. So they have to learn these things and we have to provide that introduction. Business model generation. So there's a, a wonderful book by Alex Osterwalder and a co-author that really is about crafting your business model. Uh, wonderful uh, resource. There are some people who don't know about these things and not just the prospective CEOs, a number of validators have been in introduced to this material, not at all. Um, third thing, intro to wicked problems. We talk about wicked problems. We don't just mean that they're, they're evil. Um, we don't just mean that they're wicked odd, as you might say if you're from Boston or from Maine. Uh, what we mean is there's a class of problems that are different than the basic tame problems where we can see here's where we are, here's where we want to go, how do we get there? These problems involve multiple stakeholders, uh, require a great deal more thought and, and, and uh, a specific kind of approach. So wicked problems, we uh, introduce that. Uh, uh, so this course material, uh, which includes the things that I described, will also include a number of proprietary things from both 101010 and from Greenhouse, the organization that we brought in last year to help the prospective CEOs develop and work with a common vocabulary about how to think about problems. Mm -hmm. So that'll be, um, that'll be an interesting thing over the course of 30 days and uh, stay tuned for that. That'll be a lot of fun. Very exciting. And the future of 101010? So this is, uh, this is near and dear to my heart. If 101010 uh, becomes what I expect it will be, 
we will not only see 101010 uh, begin to uh, grow in other startup communities throughout the country and ultimately around the world, but we'll see 101010 begin to tackle other wicked problem areas. So I was at a, 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 a retreat in Colorado Springs maybe 10 days ago in which the state of Colorado connected with key foundations, the Walton Family Foundation, uh, Gates Family Foundation, Betcher, and others. And in this context, uh, they learned about the state water plan, learned how foundations might be uh, encouraged to be involved with the state water plan and to support it in some way. Well, water. Water is a particularly critical issue in Colorado. Uh, we are a headwaters, the headwaters state for so many uh, parts of the country. And um, what's really powerful about water is um, we have to manage it. We have to think about its supply. We have to think about its transport. We have to think about ways to innovate. So uh, we're now part of an initiative, this is 101010, called Wet Data. Uh, well, Wet Data is about um, uh, creating a global uh, Water Data and Innovation Center headquartered in Denver and uh, really supported by uh, uh, folks that are water experts uh, in Deloitte, uh, uh, supported by new initiatives uh, from developers creating uh, an extraordinary new place in Rhino uh, coming up, a $200 million uh, development effort, and by 101010 uh, that expects to use that water data to help support entrepreneurs who are uh, driving innovation in water. So uh, I, uh, when I think about the world in the future, I see us as helping uh, large organizations, nonprofits and for-profits, come to recognize entrepreneurs as a powerful resource to focus and move at speed. I see us helping uh, entrepreneurs begin to understand that they can actually make progress with wicked problems in the world. And I see us delivering impacts uh, that can't be achieved without beginning to bring that entrepreneur into the mix and beginning to uh, explore these things in a way um, that hasn't been touched yet. Fresh, new, interesting animal. 10, 10, 10. It's fascinating. Thanks it's for coming in today. <laughs> well, thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Uh, water may be on the horizon for 10, 10, 10, and it's raining today, which is rare for dimmer, so that's good. We need We need it. the moisture. We need it. That's what they always say. It is true. Uh, but I want to thank you for coming by, and uh, that'll be it for The Kick. Thanks, Tom Higley, CEO of 101010. Thank you. Appreciate it.